If you've ever worked with an Angular application that has routing, you may have wanted to add transitions as you navigate between routes. It would just make the app feel more elegant overall. Well, if you didn't know, this is totally doable with the animation module, and in this video, I'll show you just how easy it is. All right, let's get to it. Now, before we get too far along, it's important to note that I've already created several videos focused on the animation framework in Angular. These videos cover many different animation topics, so if any of these concepts look unfamiliar to you, you'll probably want to check these videos out first so that you're not lost in this example. And to make them easier to find, I've created an Angular animation playlist to help, so check it out. Okay, enough of that. On to the example for this video. For this example, we'll be using this simple demo application. We have a few different pages that we can navigate to. This app already has been set up with routing, so when we click the links in the main nav, we properly navigate to the appropriate page. But when we navigate to the different pages, it would be better if we had some sort of transition. Maybe some sort of crossfade like we're seeing here. Well, this is exactly what we're going to be doing in this video. But first, let's look at the existing code to better understand what we need. Okay, so like I mentioned, this app has already been set up with routing. So if we take a look at the app component, in the template, we have a router outlet. When we click any of the links in the navigation component, the routed component will be inserted as a sibling of the router outlet element. If we look at the route config, we can see that this is where we've provided both the path that we want to see in the address bar, as well as the component that we want to display when navigating to that path. So when we navigate to the blog path, for example, the blog component will be displayed. Or if we navigate to the contact path, the contact component will be displayed. You get the idea. So what this means is if we look at the app component template with the router outlet again, the active component for the new route will be considered an entering item as far as Angular animations are concerned. And the component from the previous path will be considered a leaving item. This means we'll have a way to animate them both. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the concept of enter and leave animations, I've got a video for you. So be sure to check that out to better understand the concept. Okay, now that we have an understanding of how all of this works currently, let's start by creating our animation. To do this, we'll start by adding a new file for the animation code. Let's name it route transition. Now let's add an exportable const so that we'll be able to import this animation into our app component. Let's call it route transition. We'll set it using the trigger function from the Angular Animations module. For the name, we can also call it route transition as well. Okay, next we need a transition function. For this route transition, we'll want it to run whenever the route data changes. So we'll animate from any state with the asterisk to any other state. Now the first thing that we'll want to do is set the item entering to start from a hidden state. So let's add the query function to query for the entering component. Then we'll add the style function so that we can provide the starting styles. We'll start with an opacity of 0 and a scale of 0.9. The last thing we need to do is add the optional flag for when no entering items are found. OK, next we'll transition the leaving component. So let's add another query function and query for leaving items this time. For this item, we don't need any starting styles since it will automatically start from a fully opaque, fully scaled size. 
All we need to do is add the animation so we can add the animate function. To make sure we can really see the animation, let's start out by animating over one second. Now let's add the style that we're going to animate to with another style function. We'll want to animate to an opacity of 0 and a scale of 0.9. And then this needs to be optional as well. Okay, the last thing we need to do is animate the entering item to its final visible state. So let's add another query and query for entering items. Since we already set the starting style, we can just add the animation function to animate to the final state. We'll animate over one second again. And let's add another style function. And we'll animate to an opacity of 1 and a scale of 1, 2. Then we just need to make it optional. OK, that should be everything we need for the animation. Now we can switch over and add it to the app component. To use the animation, let's first add the animation's array in our component metadata. Within this array, let's add our new route transition animation. OK, so now we can wire this up. But before we do, it's important to understand how this layout works. It uses a grid. The first column is for the navigation, and the second column is for the routed components. Anything that is a sibling of the router outlet will be placed in the second grid column, meaning both the entering and leaving items will exist within this column on top of one another. The bummer here is that we need to add a container around the router outlet in order to properly bind our animation since it needs to be able to query for entering and leaving items. But that's OK. We can set it to display contents, so it'll essentially be invisible. So let's add a div. And on this div, let's add a style with display contents. OK, so this is where we'll bind our animation trigger. But what will we bind it to in order to trigger it when changing routes? Well, for this, we can use the activated routes snapshot data object. To do this, we need to add a constructor. Then we need to inject in the activated route. Let's create a protected field named route. And then we need to inject in the activated route class. Now let's bind our animation trigger on the div. And we'll bind to the route snapshot data object. This object is updated every time the route changes, so it should properly trigger our animation. OK, we're almost there. But before this animation will run, we need to enable animations by adding the provide animations function in our providers array. OK, so that should be everything we need to properly transition when navigating between routes. So let's save and try it out. Nice. Looks like it's properly animating both the component that is leaving and then animating the component that is entering to. Now, it looks a little odd, primarily because of how slow it animates. But if you remember, we are animating over one second for the item leaving, and then one more second for the entering item. This is pretty slow for these types of transitions, but I really wanted to illustrate how this animation works. Now that we can see it working and understand it, let's switch the duration to something like 0.2 seconds instead. Now let's save and try it again. There, much better. 
Of course, there's many different ways to animate this type of thing. Your imagination is really all that's holding you back because now you know everything else you need to know to add route transitions in your Angular applications. Now, there's still plenty more to cover on Angular animation, so I'll go ahead and stop here for now. But keep an eye out for more videos in the future. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.